Yes, awesome. So, um, so we launched the network last August. It, we've been holding workshops every two weeks, online workshops. We've been holding some networking events every month. And the community response and recovery network is sort of the latest iteration of this work. And it is, the idea around it is a cohort model of sort of building a group of people, doing some common work in their communities that come together to learn from one another, to share from their experience, to connect to some resources, to connect to VCRD and other partners, but sort of building a team that's working, um, that's working in their own communities, but shares some common challenges, because what we see is there's real power in, in sort of coming together as a group uh, to learn from one another. So um, I guess the other thing I wanna mention that has helped contribute to this work is that for the last year and a half, we have been convening something called the Climate Catalyst Leadership Program. And actually Margaret is a member of our second cohort of that group. And uh, it's in many ways, this new community response and recovery uh, core is a similar model uh, to Climate Catalyst. So I just sort of wanna give you a, a sense of that. We've, we've had a couple cohorts of folks over the, last, um, over the last year and a half. Our, our, our current group is a group of 15 folks and they're all working on sort of climate and energy and resilience projects in their community. We come together monthly for a 90 minute uh, Zoom session uh, that uh, members connect with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis for just sort of like whatever, kind of a, a check-in conversation, maybe some coaching or just like sort of working together to, to solve some problems. And then we bring in some guest speakers and, 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 and do a, a fair amount of work in, in small groups. So we've, uh, we've learned from doing this Climate Catalyst program. It's, it's, I think it's, it's been uh, useful to the participants, but we're always trying to learn and improve from that work. And, um, and so just wanted to sort of share that with you. And actually, it's really nice that Margaret's here because maybe uh, Margaret can help uh, field some questions as well as we move into the Q&A part of this conversation to just um, think with us um, about sort of what's the value, what's the usefulness of this, this type, of a, type of a program. So finally, I want to just talk quickly about the Community Response and Recovery Corps. Uh, so I, here's what I would describe are some of the goals of, of bringing this group together. Uh, First of all, just building some connections. Like it's true in general in Vermont, but it's especially true in this time uh, of COVID-19. We are not making some of the connections that, uh, that we might've made. Plus so many of us sort of toil and work in our rural communities where we're maybe not, um, not able to sort of run into other people doing similar work. And so, so we see some real value in just getting connected to other leaders around the state. Uh, you know, a member of my Climate Catalyst group helped me think about this other aspect of this work, which is level, I think he calls it level three. I'm not even sure I'm getting the terminology right, but level three conversations, which is, you know, so much of our work is in this day-to-day -day sort of logistics how do we get things done? How do we move our projects forward? Whatever it is we're working on. And one of the goals of this cohort effort is really to rise above some of that day-to-day -day work and have some bigger picture conversations. What we see is it's helpful to zoom out and step back and think big picture, which isn't to say we're not also working about some of the technical aspects of what we're doing and the on the ground aspects, but coming together with people who aren't part of your team doing the work, but instead can bring you some outside perspective and help think uh, about the big picture. Uh, we find that that's helpful. And similarly, learning from others and helping others. I mean, that, that was one of the powers of, of this concept of mutual aid is that, you know, sometimes we need things and sometimes we provide things. And for us at VCRD, as we think about our leadership work and we think about a cohort like this, it is absolutely in that frame of, uh, you know, 
What VCRD is, is the convener. We're bringing people together. But what I have a confidence in is that the people who come together, and when I say come together, you know, mostly we're talking virtually these days, but that the people who come together, it's really just about enabling them to provide suggestions, advice, and a sounding board to one another. And that, uh, what we're trying to do is tap into and unleash that potential uh, for folks in, in really supporting one another. Providing, you know, we use that term mutual support, but it can be nice to have a team that's kind of your cheerleader, your sounding board, that's removed from your day-to-day -day work. It's not a member of your board. It's not a member of your staff. It's simply a group of people who are interested in each, each other's success and is, and is um, providing support to one another as we do, um, as we do our work. And, um, you know, the final piece is that uh, for this leadership work, we certainly, for VCRD, we're interested in providing direct support to folks, whether that's, uh, at, you know, we have a new member of our staff, um, Alyssa Johnson, who is a community projects associate who's providing some technical support. Uh, uh, Jenna and Paul Costello are really um, great in terms of thinking about facilitation and, um, and public engagement. And so when we think about how we can be helpful, again, the way I frame this is uh, sort of your success is Vermont success. And so for VCRD, part of what we feel like our reason for being is just helping lo local leaders get things done in their communities, because we have this confidence and this uh, awareness that uh, that when local leaders are successful, uh, their communities are successful and Vermont is successful. So that's kind of like a big picture underpinning of this work. So like, how does that, I mean, that's sort of in the abstract, but how is that, how does that, how do we put that into practice? We, we come together. Uh, the idea around the recovery core is that we come together twice every month for one hour. And part of the way we're designing this is we really want it to be accessible to folks. We do not have a fee for participation. Uh, and we feel like two sort of lunchtime one hour sessions over the course of a month is ideally that's manageable for somebody's schedule. Uh, there are some really amazing leadership programs in the state of Vermont, like the Snelling Institute, where you are you give up sort of six weekends, let's say, overnights, where you really, it's sort of more immersive. And those are incredible programs. And frankly, they're in a different space than what we're trying to do. Uh, in a way, uh, this is a little bit less of a leadership program and more about sort of almost like a, a networking program. The idea is if we build a cohort of folks that have some common challenges and, and, and common uh, work together, that, there's, that there is simply power in bringing that group together. It's not like for those hour long sessions, what we try to avoid is really long sort of like presentations. That, that, that's just not, uh, we don't find that to be uh, as useful as really coming up with vehicles for pe people to bring their own voice and own own perspective into the conversation. So I often say, you know, if someone comes into one of these things thinking they're just going to kind of be a fly on the wall, you know, maybe have their video off just quietly, like the one thing we ask of participants is that you sort of bring your full self and you come ready to engage because it's in that engagement that is the chemistry that makes this work. That really is. Um, and it's the value, like there's not as much value for someone to be sort of in an observer space as opposed to more of a participant space, I would say. So, um, you know, there's a couple other points I wanna make um, before we get to those logistics, but um, a couple of things. One, uh, one of the key sort of philosophies around this leadership network is that, that uh, leaders are, we, we do not have any sort of guardrails around who a leader is. Uh, the truth is uh, anyone is a leader in some capacity or another. And, and so many Vermonters play a 
leadership role in their community in trying to do things. You know, I, I mentioned this a lot, but my neighbor across the street convenes the neighbors and it's three or four people for a Qui Gong exercise session every day at noon. And you know what? She's a leader, right? She's doing that uh, for her neighbors. We're all, so, so what, what we don't say is you've gotta be a manager, you've got to have credentials, you need to be an elected official. Anyone's a leader. We really, that's, that's sort of core to this leadership network. And the next thing I would say is, you know, and this is a point of reflection is, when you talk about community response and recovery, I guess part of my, my framing of that is that the truth is everyone is in that work right now. Like no one, if you think about the impacts of the pandemic and how we are moving beyond and thinking forward, like it doesn't matter if you're a small business owner, you're a nonprofit organization, you're a town official, like we are all in this work of community response and recovery. So what that sort of means is it's a little more fluid in terms of like um, the, the topic area, let's say. And in a way like, and I'm gonna, we, we did a few quick introductions, but like hearing from, I'm gonna call you out, Bill, Margaret and Dan, like to me, those were three different sort of categories of response and recovery, right? Dan really thinking about the small businesses in Montpelier, Margaret sort of uh, part of a group that's doing essentially mutual aid work in Charlotte, and Bill who's sort of with the fire de department and the emergency, uh, e emergency response. All of those are certainly squarely within this, this area of sort of response and recovery, but sort of different flavors of that. And, and one thing that I would, argue, and I've seen this play out with our climate catalysts too, is that the value that a group provides to one another is, is more in the, uh, I would say the next, the sort of higher altitude work of sol solving challenges and being effective, as opposed to sort of the on the ground technical challenges of like a specific so, so what this isn't is a group that's only sort of working on business recovery. This isn't gonna be a group that's in sort of one of those narrow categories because what I see is that there's actually real value in rising to that next level of altitude where you've got a group of people that are, that are sort of doing work in their communities, sort of some sense of shared direction, but not necessarily it's not like our climate catalyst is everyone trying to do a community solar project. Now, th there would probably be a different set of values if we were all sort of in, in that tight of a box, let's say. But we think um, there's real value to be provided to one another in a little bit of a broader, uh, broader space. I guess. Uh, so I'm realizing, I don't know if I'm sharing, am I even sharing the right screen? Are you guys seeing my slides? Oh, that's good. All right, I should have asked that question. Uh, so let me just get to a couple of details and then I really wanna just open it up for, for questions and, and curiosities from you all. So we've got a deadline next, uh, next Monday for applications. We will come together twice monthly starting, I think it was April 14th. And the idea is their lunchtime, so, so noon to one o'clock. And that's a little bit different. Our climate catalyst group is, is sort of meeting once monthly over the course of a year. And one of like the reflections I've had is that if you only come together once a month, it actually that a month can feel like a long time and that, you, that there's a little more cohesion. My hope is, it's part of what we're learning as we go, but my hope is with this recovery core that that twice every month means that you're, you're with each other with a little more frequency for a little bit of a shorter period but, um, but then you just get more familiar and more comfortable and it's a little bit less of sort of playing catch up of what happened in, in the intervening month because it's only two weeks. So um, I think that's it. I'm um, going to stop sharing because I always much prefer not to be sharing the screen. And uh, I really just wanna sort of open it up for questions as you all think about whether this, I mean, 
For me, I, I let me put this sort of as frankly as I can, the most precious resource any of us have is our time. For me, as I think about this work and this program, that that's like the fundamental question is, is this worth two hours of your time every month? Because that's two hours that you could be doing something else. And so, and, and I guess what I would say is, that's what we ask of our participants, as I was saying before, is that you really bring your sort of full self and, and commit to that because the value to everybody is that we commit to that, to that sort of hour of being present. And it, I have to say, it feels a little silly in manufactured to talk about being present when where we are present over the, you know, over the computer wires and on a screen. Um, uh, at the same time, I guess one of our learnings at BCRD that I never would have expected uh, a year plus ago is that you actually can have a depth of conversation that I didn't really think was possible. And it's not the same as being in a room together and having that sense of intimacy and like real human connection, but it also is more accessible. Like it's, it means we're not, we can bring Vermonters together from all corners of the state and have a punctuated one hour conversation where you didn't get into your car. You could have a meeting that ends at noon and another meeting that starts at one. And you can, and I know that's part of what we're all grappling with is, man, it's a lot of this time. And that's, I guess, part of what I'm sure people, as they think about a program like this, it's like, oh, another hour on Zoom over the course of my week. Is that, am I ready for that? And my hope in something like this is that the value of making connections and stepping out of your day-to-day -day work to think with others, uh, there's a real value there. Um, so I'll stop talking and just kind of open it up to see if people have some questions for me. And you can sort of wave or, yeah, Margaret, go for it. So this uh, this is a um, sort of six month ish, you said, um, program. But I'm thinking one of the things we're grappling with here, both specifically at the library and more generally in our town, looking at the mutual aid, is what might be the next thing coming down the pike that will require us to pivot you know, switch gears as quickly as we had to, or maybe not as quickly as we would have wanted to. So will there be an eye to sort of, here's how you might carry some of this planning forward with you. So you're not, we're not caught, you know, step. I mean, I hope we don't have another COVID situation, but you know, there's climate change. There's a lot of things that could impact our lives, not to be totally pessimistic, but uh, I'm just wondering if there's going to be sort of a long view perspective of lessons that you could carry with you. Uh, I, I would say most definitely. I would say to some degree, I would expect that to emerge from conversations. And I, I mean, some of this, even thinking back six months ago, I know some of the mutual aid organizations were very much thinking like, okay, sort of what do we evolve into and how do we retain some of the structure that we know was valuable, right? Like that and not, and sometimes what it takes to retain that structure is something to do, action. And when the need and the urgency of actions diminishes, it just sort of dissipates. So to me, that's a, a challenge that I imagine we might have in common. Uh, and, and I think it's very much what I think we'll sort of grapple with. I guess the other thing I would say is like when we, and I don't want to over advertise this, I got to be a little careful, but like our, our role is to, when somebody participates in one of our community visit programs or in, in some other program for VCRD, they they don't tend to lose track of our email address and our phone number. Like, it's like, you're sort of like, um, it's part of what I think I really love about VCRD is like, there's this whole crew of people who know they can come back when they have a suggestion for us or as they think about how do they move forward. It, as, so like, yeah, that six months is, is sort of a finite thing. 
you know, I, I would say one other piece on the six month time period, part of me says, that like if the group is finding value and coming together, like they might just figure out how to do that on their own. Like it's like it doesn't always it's really that's an incredible thing about sort of this online thing. And in a way, it's too easy. Right. But like if the group or if maybe you just find one other person you really connect with in the group and you say, you know what, we should just get together monthly to touch base with each other. Like I think it's really possible, whether it's with VCRD or with somebody else in the group that those things, I kind of think of like a little bit, like a six month, a little more intensive, and then then just take it from there uh, for folks and, and figure out sort of where, where they want to go. So, Penelope, I see you had a hand up. Yes, hi, and I'm sorry that I missed the introductions. I, I'm in the Northeast Kingdom and connections don't always work the way that you might like them to. Um, and I had my state computer on and didn't realize, so I turned that off and was able to join you. So I'm in uh, Craftsbury and um, I actually work for Vermont Emergency Management. Um, and I had a comment on, on Margaret's um, question and that discussion that was going on. I'm, I'm new to Vermont-ish, you know, several years here, but I used to be in another state where I did a lot of disaster response in a large state where it was a variety of disasters. And one of the things that I noticed here during the COVID response and all of the emerging community mutual aids, and we had quite a bit here in Craftsbury, I sit on that one and I sit on the Hardwick area, neighbor to neighbor group as well, um, is this, this was really so different from the very finite types of events that Vermonters are used to, and that all of Vermont structures are built around, which makes sense, you know, with the, where it's embedded, typically the, the response plans are, are embedded with the fire departments, Bill would, you know, um, would be able to say that either that or within the town and there's very prescribed roles because it starts on October 31st and it ended on, you know, a week later. And, and so there is not a lot of reason for towns to have developed a more networked approach. And, and I think that is going to be one of the true um, values of something like this. It's also gonna be one of the true challenges as, as people in towns are figuring out, oh, wait, do we need to open this up to other folks? We haven't done it that way before. And, and so I see that as something that's gonna be very valuable um, in talking with each other. I liked what you said about um, Paul uh, Costello, you know, be, them being very interested in facilitation and community engagement. I actually did that in, in Texas for a, a large agency and I was actually told to get in touch with him. I'd forgotten about that. Um, but I think that's just so important uh, to help each other figure out what's gonna fit the personality of the groups we're working with and that we want to um, engage and partner with. So um, yeah, I, I think the, the ongoing, they're talking in Crossbury right now about whether to let the group go dormant at the same time that Hardwick is talking about what else can we do to help moving forward. So again, personalities and viewpoints coming yeah. in. Yeah, so. those are great examples. Thanks Penelope. Others, other questions or, yeah, Bill. Um, you know, so maybe, I don't know, a, a big scope kind of picture because it'll just help me a little bit. You know, what, what kind of outcomes do you expect uh, to come out of this organization or this group? You know, in other words, what are the metrics that will tell you whether or not it's been <laughs> successful or not, right? Yeah. I mean, what, do you, what do you hope to see? And, you know, kind of related to that is like, where did this idea come from? I mean, what was the problem it was intended to solve or who, who raised the, the point that this would be a good thing to do? Yeah, I think that's, those are great questions and I appreciate you asking them. And because um, it's something, as you can imagine in our work, that's a constant point of reflection is, okay, how do we measure success? And, and honestly, sometimes it's really small sort of interactions that I see amongst members uh, where they say, oh, you need to call this person or here is what I did here that was helpful for me in that circumstance 
or you know, we, I had members of my Climate Catalyst group where one member came to participate in the select board members meeting of another member to articulate what their experience had been with an e-bike lending library so that that select board could get comfortable with that concept. So there's, there is, and, and what's a little hard about an, um, metrics and deliverables about that is some of it's just this sort of kismet kind of synergy thing where, and it, it sounds really soft and maybe it is too soft for some folks, but like I have this general confidence that when there are people who are rolling up their sleeves, trying to get important things done in Vermont towns, that when you bring them together and just ask them a, a set of questions and allow them to talk with one another, that things come from that. It's like when you host a conference and so many people after that conference talk about the most valuable piece of that conference was like the registration table line or the lunch. And, and we aren't having many registration tables and lunches these days. And so um, this is allowing for some of that, uh, those interactions. I will, um, this is a confession I'm gonna make to you, which is when we, when we, when we were plunged into the pandemic, I, I was talking to my wife, Rebecca, about how much I missed the conversations I have on the street in Montpelier or when I go to Shaw's, it, you just, th that has fallen out of our life in a way, those incidental contacts. And around the same time, I saw a little New Yorker clip about this really strange thing called quarantine chat. And literally you sign up for it, it's an app and you get connected at random times to random people around the world who are, who are experiencing the pandemic. And the, I would have these strange, 30 minute conversations with just total strangers, but like the reflection it helped me do and, and sort of, and, and sometimes I was in a place of really helping somebody else in this random conversation. And sometimes I was like the one being helped, but like there was a learning that happened for me in, in doing that really strange thing that I think could have only happened in the midst of a pandemic that I, that in a weird way I bring to this, which is that that we, we, and in particular in Vermont, where, where, like I say, we're in rural places and we don't off, and we're really in a moment now in particular where we're just not making some of those connections. Now, I've answered your first question and I feel like I forgot part two of your question, Bill, which. I was, I was mostly just wondering like, where did this all come from? I oh mean, yeah. Who's yeah, you know, whose idea was it? What what problem yep. was it intended to solve? Yes. You know, that's actually a great. Record. So, uh, I've mentioned the Climate Catalyst program, and the Climate Catalyst program actually emerged from something that we called the Climate Economy Model Communities program. And with the Model Communities program, I sort of bring this facilitation work similar to community visits. And I do it at the community scale of like, okay, we're gonna have a, com a conversation in the town of Middlebury about climate and the economy. And we're gonna think about things we wanna work on together. We're gonna select some priorities and we're gonna move those priorities forward. And those have been rich and, and um, that work is, is productive. But one of my takeaways is, you know what? I want to come up with a way to work a little with a, a lower cost of entry where there are people who have ideas for projects in their communities around climate and just want to come together with one another. And I want to come up with a vehicle where I bring them together to learn from one another, but also I'm giving them some direct support and coaching. So it, it was like a different way to cast a net for people trying to get things done in their community. And that's what the Climate Catalyst really emerged from was like, how do we um, provide support to leaders who maybe are already working on a project? Or, you know, what's interesting about Climate Catalyst is some people are in the midst of a project and they apply for Climate Catalyst. Some people see the Climate Catalyst opportunity and what they do is they say, I'm gonna come up with a project as a vehicle, because I just want to participate in that group and connect with other people. So they sort of build a project around their participation in climate capital. Other questions uh, from you all?
Dan. Sure. Um, so I'm a I'm a Snelling Center graduate, actually. So I'm glad you brought that up, and I absolutely see the value in a group like this. So I'm excited that you're organizing something like this. Um, my question is a more sort of personal logistics one. Um, I completely appreciate that you want people to commit to the you know being present and giving to the experience. I know that I'm going to be on paternity leave in July and August. Um, so wondering whether be inappropriate for me to apply given that I know that I'll likely miss several of the meetings. I, I'm, um, I'm, I guess happy to think with you on that. Like I, I, if, if it feels like you might miss one or two over the course of that two months, um, if it felt like you would, yeah, I, 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 I'm happy to think more, I guess, about that. But if it, sort of means you're in for a, I mean, I will say that um, we had a couple of folks from Climate Catalyst who, I mean, life just gets in the way and that's that's the nature of this. And so um, I what I know is my hope is each session has its own value, right? And so like if someone comes for the first couple of months, I, I actually don't think that diminishes much from the experience of those who remain part of the conversation, right? Just to be like, I'm sort of thinking this through as I go. So I think where I'm getting to as I think this through as I go is that, yeah, I think that doesn't really, I think it would be much harder if someone was like, I'm gonna miss the first month and I wanna come in later, right? Cause like you build that, the, the connectivity with one another. But to me, it's like, if you have to sort of pull out uh, for a little bit. In fact, we had a, a member of our recent group who like went away on a, almost like a sabbatical and they missed a, a session or two and they're they're back at it. And I, I think that that can work. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Other questions or suggestions or ideas for me as I, um, as I think about this and Margaret. Sort of two parts. So, um, I'm part of the Climate Catalyst, and I feel like that is a good place for me. And I'm here mostly to find out if there might be others, particularly in our Charlotte Community Partners Group, for whom this would be a good fit. Yes. I think it might be a lot for me to take on both of these, <laughs> these pieces. Um, and so I guess, but then my question is, if I'm the Climate Catalyst person and this person is part of this group, can those work together in a sort of this larger group that we um, that we have large for sure a lot anyway? I mean, my reaction is it will, we figure those kinds of things out. Like okay. I know I had Lo Laurel from Rockingham who was part of our first group of climate catalysts. She sent this to Rockingham Help and Helpers who's their mutual aid group. Like that's, okay. yeah, I think um, I, I wouldn't worry about sort of somehow okay. Yeah, okay. fitting it all together, so. Okay. Great, thank you. Yeah. Other questions from anybody? You know, I would love your suggestions for ways to get the word out. It's really, this is a, I feel like it's a strange thing and it's hard to describe a little bit. And so like, if you guys have any ideas for me of like networks that I should be plugging into as I um, talk about this, I think um, I, I would welcome those suggestions. Well, um, I, John, I don't remember actually where I learned about this first, whose, whose newsletter it was in, but if you have not, I understand this isn't actually a leadership development program, but if you haven't already tapped into the existing leadership programs and their mm -hmm. newsletters, that would be a place to go. That's great. Good suggestion. Andrea, did I see you? Uh, yeah. yeah, thanks. I was just curious if I didn't catch where Dan's from, but I feel like it was Hardwick. Is that, it sounds, seems like. I'm from Montpelier. Oh, Montpelier. Um, but the other three, and Margaret's Charlotte, but the other three of us would be the kingdom. And I just wasn't sure if that's just a coincidence or if you, I just wasn't sure. Yeah, I don't know, actually. I don't. Um, I know yeah. that um, our, one of our, this is Penelope, I'm sorry. And I don't have a, I can't put a picture up because I still don't have good enough connection. Um, but uh, I'm in Craftsbury and I, I'm the one that mentioned Hardwick because I also sit on the Hardwick board, Andrea, the, the neighbor to neighbor um, uh, group. I saw it because one of our select board 
members put it on Craftsbury Front Porch Forum and just kind of put it out there to say if you're interested in this. And of course, you know, with my background, I was like, yeah, I'd like to sit in and see what's going on because I think it would be great if there was more ways for us all to share what we're doing and help each other figure out um, what what is a, a constructive way to to meld all of the things that are going on without it feeling to everybody like, oh my gosh, everybody's just trying to change everything we've ever done. You know, it, it's this is more about sharing and how do we make it work better for the long haul kind of. Is, does that help, Andrea? Yeah, it, absolutely. Where, where are you? I'm, I, I'm in Peachum. And okay. actually, um, Bill, aren't, aren't you, do you live in Peachum, right? <laughs> no, my, um, my, my grandkids live in Peachum, so I'm there a lot. Oh, that's why. Okay, I was going to say, because I don't see you on the fire department, but we could use you. So you should <laughs> come over to our fire department. <laughs> no, I, I retired from the fire department after 35 years. I oh, I see. But you can still bring us maple syrup. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and, and he can bring expertise to the, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. this table, that's for sure. You um, know, You know, one thing I'll mention, too, is like for VCRD as an organization, the convening of this kind of a conversation, the convening of Climate Catalyst, it is very much for us a, an opportunity where we learn and we, we take away from those conversations and they inform so much of the work that we're doing in other venues as well. You know, I'm part of this group of like town energy committees, the VCAN network and like the Climate Catalyst, all the time I'm picking things up from Climate Catalyst that I'm sharing with the partners that are organizing the VCAN network. And it was similar with mutual aid. When we were convening all those mutual aid groups, it was so helpful to be able to connect with Phil Coling at Serve Vermont and really think about the sort of volunteer aspect of this work. So it, I, that, it, that's part of like the, the strange value stream of this is that it really is helpful in feeding things in, in, other, in the other direction as well. So. Other, any other questions or thoughts for me as we maybe wrap things up here? Well, I really want to appreciate you all for, for coming and uh, for your interest and also for asking some really good questions. I'm totally available for like follow up one on one if there's anything specific and um, any help you want to provide and spreading the word would be great. You know, part of me thinks like as I get people uh, interested in applying, I'm like, bring a friend, figure out who are you going to bring to this crew? Because I think um, there's maybe as people uh, join the group thinking about like, oh, who ha has some common interest and might also be interested, you know, Dan, like if it's a step bone and down in Brattleboro or something like that, like that, that um, could add, um, add some, some dynamic uh, energy, I think. So. Come well, speak at one of the downtown meetings, Sean. Uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, totally ha happy to, so. Uh, well, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Oh, that's a great, great suggestion, Andrea. That's excellent. And I know I need to follow up with the NEK Collaborative as well as another as another resource too. So, yeah, awesome. Thanks, well, thank Andrea. you. Uh, yeah. Um, thanks, everybody. I think we'll uh, we'll bring it to a close. But really uh, appreciate uh, your uh, joining us today. So, thank you. Thanks so much. Bye. Yeah, you bet. Thank you.